hearts to hear, O oh Lord God, and partake of the meal that is your word. Thank you for today, Lord. Whatever we may have gone through, it drew us closer to you, Lord. And being here tonight, we'll also do the same. Because we want to walk with you, Lord God, in the cool of the day. We want to hear you and feel your presence, Lord, in all of our endeavors. Because you are life, and we thank you, Father. We speak life. As a family, as a church, as a community, we speak life. And we thank you, Father. Let us, O oh Lord God, be hungry and excited about what we will learn tonight. And in the application of it, Father, give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all of us together said, amen. Amen. God bless you. All right, to God be all the praise and glory. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to get back into this. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Next time. All right, to God be the glory. Um, last week we was uh, sharing, and we're going to continue today on uh, the free will God has given us our free will. We are free will beings and we need to understand how important it is that we have a free will. We know that we should know uh, the responsibility of choices because we are the sums of our choices that we make in life. At the end of the day, at the final decision, uh, as adult, we make decisions. And sometimes, you know, we say I was persuaded by others in my decision making or someone deceived me or whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, you have to make a, a choice of which way you're going to do, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. So we're going to get into this free will being. I think it'll be very important that we understand uh, why God gave us a free will and how and when he gave us this free will, how and when he gave us a free will. So if we go back to uh, the book of Genesis uh, chapter, let's go back to Genesis chapter, I think that's chapter one, and let's look at verse uh, seven. Genesis chapter one and verse seven. So the creation of man in chapter 1 of Genesis and verse 7. It tells us everything about ourselves originally. So verse 7, 2, 7. Yeah, Genesis 2 and 7. All right, I'll put that up, Genesis 2 and 7. All right, it says, and, um, and the Lord God formed man from what? The dust of the ground. All right, let's deal with that again. God formed us from the dust. From dust we were taken, dust we shall return, right? We got that. Uh, I was thinking about our physical lives, and I was sharing in a homegoing service the other day about the physical life that we have on earth. Uh, no matter how many funerals you go to, no matter, many, no matter how many funerals we go to, we can never imagine that one day we would have being in, in there. I mean, we see it, but it just don't really, really, really come to realization. And that's how God made us. He don't want us dealing with it until it's time to deal with it. And I thank him for it, amen? So you may, we, may, we know it's coming, but we don't have to deal with it until God prepares us to deal with it. And I thank God for that, amen? And... Um, and when that time comes, then God will bring all that season and mental, emotionally, spiritual acceptance and realization, and then we deal with it. 
So the key is that God formed man from the dust of the ground. Now, this is so important. And I said last week uh, that the ground is calling for its material back. Y'all got it? The ground is demanding. I, that's the word I need to use. The earth is what? Demanding its, its material back after we sin. It wasn't going to get it back until we sin. So God formed the from the dirt, from the dust. So the earth is demanding its material back. And when I say demanding, it does not give us a choice. You see, we can, um, uh, we don't even have to make a decision about the earth getting its material back. It, we don't have to make the decision because all we gotta do is just live long enough and the earth say, I'm gonna get my material back. And it has to have nothing to do with your decision one way or the other. God also, now he breathes into man's nostril. That means he breathes his spirit into us, right? God also wants his spirit back, coming back to him, right? The difference between uh, the earth demanding its material back for dust we, would, we came from dust we shall return. The earth is demanding its material back God doesn't demand his spirit back. That's where we have this choice. We have to choose by our confession of our sins, we have to choose to our spirit to go back to God. When we are absent from the body, we want to be what? But we have to what? Make that choice, right? We don't have to make a choice about the earth getting the material back, but when it comes to God, we have to make what now? A choice. Now, let's look at this part here. This is so important that we get this part, the last part, of which is the soul. Now, we understand that body came from the ground. We understand the spirit came from God. But the soul itself became who we are. Our soul really identify each one of us in a certain way because of our personalities, our mindset, and our will all of us are a little different. So the soul sort of separate us in so many ways, but yet we all have a soul. Now, the, the question, the statement I made earlier, when did man, when did we as human beings first receive our free will? Now, look at this. Now, look at that verse seven again. God breathed in the man, the breath of uh, the breath, um, God and, and breathed into the nostril the breath of life and man became a what? Okay, the minute we became the exact time, let me put this up for a second, the exact time we became a living soul we also received our free will. Y'all got it? Alright, let's picture it in our mind. Man laying on the ground he made other dust. God breathed the spirit into him. He become a living soul. And the minute he stands up, he has a free will right then. At that very moment. He has the ability to choose at that moment. So when we look now at chapter 2 and verse 16 and 17. Genesis 2 and 17. And now, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eat of it thou shalt what? Now, this is so important that you get this uh, because uh, of the free will we have. All right, now, man stands up, and because he has a free will, God starts giving him choices. God says, okay, you're a free will being. So God says this to us. Now, listen, church. God says this to us. He says, since you have a right to choose, let me tell you what to choose, and let me tell you what, come on now, not to choose. See, God already know he created a free will being. So God says, uh, there is a tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. And he says, since you are a free will being, I created you this way. 
Let me tell you what you are not to do because he can choose. So God had, now God must now give him the right thing to do and God must instruct him on what the wrong thing to do unless Adam could have said, well, you never told me what was right and you never told me what was wrong. You made me a free will being, but you didn't give me instruction. So the minute he rose up from the ground, God said, you are a free will being. So I need to tell you what will cause death, what will cause you to continue to live. So God gives him a choice. He says, now, watch what he says again, of every tree. Now, this is so important. God says, I'm not, I don't want to stop you from um, having the ability to eat from the trees. So God says to him in verse 16, the Lord God commanded him, the man, saying, of every tree in the garden, thou may what? There is only one tree you, could, you can't eat from. Now there are, okay, here's the trees in the garden. It's a tree of life. And there's a tree of good, good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil. And then there are trees. He can eat from all the trees. And there is a tree of life. And then there's a tree of good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil. It was only one tree God said he couldn't eat from. Of all the forests, let's think about a forest. God said, eat from all the forests, but there's only one tree you shouldn't eat. Now, free will being need a choice. I'm going to get to that in a few, uh, ability to choose. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Adam had the ability to eat from the tree of life. See, a lot of us don't think of that about that. He said you can eat from every tree but one. So you could eat from the tree of life too. It didn't bother him to eat from the tree of life because he was like God, right? Made in the image of God, had not sinned, so he could go to the tree of life and take from it and eat. Now, did he do it? I don't know, but he had the ability to do it because he said it's only one tree you are not to eat from. Of all the rest, see, you'll never find the Bible you say you, you couldn't eat from the tree of life. He said you can eat from every tree but the tree of good and evil. So I've had, had people ask me then, they said, well, didn't God know he was going to eat from that tree? And then I said, yes, God knew uh, that he was going to eat from that tree. God is sovereign. God knows everything. They said, well, if God knew he was going to eat from that tree, why he put it there? Okay, let me tell you why God put it there. So you would know too. Why did God put that tree there? Knowing that Adam would take from, then he know he's going to eat from all, yeah. But once God made him a free will being, he had to give him the ability to choose. And you don't, if you don't have good and evil to choose from, right and wrong to choose from, then you don't have free will. A free will gives you opportunity to choose good, come on now, or what? Evil, right or wrong. If, you all, all, if all you had were good and right to choose from, right. So God made that tree, but if he made a free will being, he got to give an ability, will you obey me or will you? Disobey me. Because you were free. God say, if, if I wanted to make a robot, I would have. But I didn't decide to make a robot. I decided to make a free will being that would make a, have ability to make choices. This is so important now, the teaching I'm going to do tonight. Because at the end of the day, we are still free will beings. I want to show you another scripture before I go any further. Uh, let's go now to Genesis chapter 3, and let's put up verse um, 6. It says, and when, am I, are y'all following me back there? 
Oh, there they go. All right. And, for, uh, and, and when the woman saw, okay, watch this. She saw what? The tree that it was good. Everyone say this, good. Just good for food. Now watch this. And that it was what? Pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be what? To make one. She took of the, uh, uh, took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband. Now, let's listen to what God did. Not only did God put the tree, not only did God put the tree there, it's people said, why he put it there? I just told you, you know, I just shared with you because we are free will beings. You can choose to do right or wrong, whatever you want to choose. And I'm gonna, we're going to get deep in this tonight. And then God not only did put a tree there, he put a beautiful tree that he, that he could not touch. He put a tree desirable to the eyes that he could not have. And she, Eve, could not have. And he made the tree so desirable and says you can't have it. And he said, well, God, at least you should make the tree like a scrub and ugly and make the fruit look rotten and all discolored, and he might not went for it. Why do you make the tree so attractive to the eyes and desirable and uh, pleasurable? Why would you do that? And this is why God did it. He knew, he knew this. As we live in this world, you're going to always see something pleasurable, desirable, that you should not touch. Hey, man, baby. You, you see, what is God saying? God saying, just because it looks pleasurable and desirable, it doesn't mean uh, that, yeah, everyone take the phone. Uh, it, just because it looks pleasurable and desirable throughout your life, the devil is going to come and tempt you with something pleasurable and desirable, but God is saying, Everything pleasurable and desirable is not good for you. Amen. How many of us have found that out in life? Isn't that part of our lives? Decide, having the ability to decide, I know that's pleasurable. I know that's desirable. I know it looked pleasing to the eyes and it looked pleasing to the taste, but it's not good for me. Amen, somebody. Amen. All of our lives, we are uh, creatures, spiritual beings that would have to make decisions. You, you never stop making decisions. You can be 80, 90. You still got to make a decision every day what you're going to do. Every morning you get up, you got, you got a new day to make decisions. When we got up this morning, you, you, I, okay, what is the first thing we normally decide to do when we wake up? Huh? Well, y'all holy, y'all some good saints then. Yeah. Well, what we, y'all saying what everybody should do, get up in the morning and say, Lord, thank you, and I acknowledge you, and I give you praise, and I give you glory, but some people get up and make bad decisions every morning. Some people don't get up in the morning and acknowledge God. Amen. Some people get up in the morning and make bad physical decisions, spiritual decisions, emotional decisions. But I guarantee you, all the days of your, our lives, we're going to have to make decisions. And watch this. Now, watch what God says. Let's go back to it now. God says, okay, I just created this. Watch. Please get it. God says, I just breathed. I just formed man from the dust of the ground. That's his body. I just breathed into him. That's the hope. That's the spirit. And now he became a living soul. That's his mind, will, and emotion. And God said, all right, now here's this human being. He said, now I'm going to give him instructions. You are not to take from this tree because I know you're a free will of being. being. Like we, when our children get up, when our children start growing, 
We tell them the do's and the don't. Don't touch that, don't eat that, don't do this, don't do that. Don't. And yet, we got to give them instruction. Why? We know them children are what? Free will beings. Amen. And so we start giving them what? Instruction. And just sure we tell them, don't touch this, that's hot. Don't eat out the cooker jar. Don't you do this. And they think, you know, everything we taught them, they can decide as children whether they're going to do it. And sometimes they choose to do the opposite. But it's our responsibility to tell them what's right. That's what God did as a good parent. He said, this is what's right and this is what's best for you. And so God said, now all of a sudden he's done that. Now, everything is set. Here's a free will being. He's walking around. He's so happy. He's obeying God. Then Satan's come. And he says, let's go God. That man and woman is God glory. And they're living such a peaceful life. And I can't get back to God and get and hurt him. But he made his glory. See, God is a free will being too. A free will spirit. God is a free will spirit. He just always choose to do right. That's who God is. He always choose to do right. He, 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 Jesus lived on his world, in this world for 33 years and never sinned. He chose to not sin. Jesus won't walk around like I can't sin. He had on his flesh. He chose not to sin. Amen. Now, Jesus just couldn't sin. We'll just say, well, what? You, you put on flesh, but you couldn't sin. He chose righteousness because he is righteousness. Amen. He was tempted, but he didn't fall for the temptation. The devil tempted him. If you be hungry, what? Turn the stone to bread. He didn't never fall for the temptation. He chose to do right and quote scripture. All right. So the devil looks around. He says, this, and I want y'all to get this. The devil looks around. He says, I see God creation. Let's come to 2024, even today. And they are free will beings. Now he went back in the garden. He says, all I got to do is to get them to change their will. God told them not to take from the tree, but they are free will beings. If I can persuade them in their will to disobey God, God can't stop them. Notice God never came down there and said, get your hand off that tree. Why? The devil knew if they decide to disobey you, you just can't come in and say, no way. You will be stopping them from being who you created them to be. So the devil said, I, I, I'm going to have to persuade them, watch this, to disobey you because they have something they can't control if they don't stick close to you. They have a free will and it's easy for me to get them to lose control with the free will if they don't stick close to you. And so he persuade Eve. She takes other tree because they look good and desirable. But now watch this. Then Adam takes it. And then God comes to Adam. He said, where are you? And then he goes through all this uh, scripture uh, tell Adam, where are you? And Adam said, well, uh, watch this. I heard that voice walking in the garden and I was afraid. And when he said he was afraid, God says, well, who you been talking to? Why? God know now he had never put in the spirit of a human being fear. He had to be talking to somebody because God does not give us a spirit, come on now, of what? Fear. So God, when he said I was afraid, God said, well, who you been talking to? Or who been talking to you? God realized, and God knew it all along, but God, God knew at that moment, Adam had decided to disobey him. He went through all this stuff. I knew this and this. And, you know, God says, 
well, have you eaten from the tree and have you decided to do your own will? And that's what's basically it. Now, here's the bottom line. Notice that who he gave the uh, commandment to was Adam. He goes to Adam and he holds him accountable. This is so important what I'm going to tonight. It doesn't matter who persuades you. At the end of the day, God going to hold you accountable. This is so important that we grow up. Quit being like children. Why did I say that? Because sometimes we act like just because somebody is in the persuasion mode and trying to deceive us, we act like we can't stand up and say no. I mean, because at the end of the day, that's what the devil do. He persuades us to disobey God. He deceives us to disobey God. We got to quit acting like we are three-year-olds, grow up in the spirit, and when we know devil taking us down the wrong road, it's time to stop and say what? No. That's it. <laughs> That's good. I'm both of y'all. Did you just follow that? Because here's what we all, we like to do. Watch what Adam does. God says, basically, I gave you a commandment. Life is full of choices. You can't start blaming folks when you choose to do the wrong thing. Okay, we, we feel like that's a, that's a ramp, off ramp. Well, Lord, you know, they tricked me. Or they deceived me. God say, okay, that's what the devil's out to do. That's his J-O-B, to deceive. Our responsibility is to be so involved, trusting in the Lord, that the devil can't just get us to make foolish decisions. All of our lives, we choose what we're going to do. You're going to choose, and you know, you can be persuaded you want to. And nothing wrong with being persuaded as long as they persuading you to something good. But you need to choose that too. Oh my God. Decisions are so important. In all our lives, you're, you're going to choose. Like I said, you'll choose um, where you're going to work. You're going to choose what career you're going to have. You're going to choose who you're going to marry. Uh, you're going to choose how that marriage is going to go. You're going to choose where you're going to work. You're going to choose even your uh, emotional state, your joy, your peace, you're going to choose all. It's you. At the end of the day, if you're miserable, okay. well, all the things that happen to me and all the people, let me tell you, you with the power of God, you can get through all of that. It's the devil's job to make you miserable. It's your job to let's say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen, somebody. We have to choose, make these major choices. Because at the end of the day, it always comes back to us as individuals. So now since we are free will, this free will being, every time I think about this, I'll make this real short because I don't like to get into it too much. I always think about, the, uh, and I've shared it in the church one or two times, in high school I had to make a decision. Um, some of my classmates was, tragically killed in a car accident. And I remember that day when they pulled up and they said to me, they said, um, uh, we finna go partying, enjoying ourselves, all that kind of stuff. And they tried to persuade me to get in the car. And I was about 17 years old. And I said, man, I, I got other things to do. And uh, I was gonna go uh, exercise, work out, and they said, man, school out. You still doing that stuff? Let's have some fun. It's summertime. And I don't care what they said to me, they couldn't persuade me because I had something to do. My mind was made up. I would not get in that car because, and they, and they you know, they rag you. We call rag. They, you know, say all kind of things that kind of bring you down. And they said, man, you just need to go home. They were drinking their beer during their little 
drugs and reefers and we call it uh, what it was back then, marijuana, whatever the case may be. And I, uh, uh, yeah, reefer, old school. Yeah, Lord. Uh, but I um, said, no, that ain't me. I'm not doing that. And so I chose to do what I wanted to do and what I had to do. And then within an hour, everybody in that car, back seat, special back seat that they were trying to persuade me to get in, had passed away. I would have been in there if I could be persuaded to do what they wanted me to do. But in the end of the day, I had to make a decision. I wish I had more young people to hear this tonight. They probably hear it on the internet because they're living in a social media society where there's a lot of pressure and peer pressure throughout the school and they're trying to do everything to fit in. But I hope they hear this tonight and say, look, you're going to do your thing. I'm going to do what God telling me to do and choose because it's a choice. You can't say in the end, you know, can you, you know, I just think about this sometimes, like when they're driving fast and we're doing all that, I kind of like, Lord, uh, but God said, look, nobody forced you in here. He could have said, you made a decision. That's life. So God comes along and he says, you are, listen church, you are a free will being. One of the most important things you can do in your life is quit crying and blaming everybody for where you are. I hope somebody hearing me. Because you can come up out of wherever you are and live the, in the purpose for which you were born. But you got to turn to God and say, God, uh, Lord Jesus. Even think about Jesus. Because he put on flesh. In the garden, he had to say, Father, not my will. Why? Because Jesus had put on what? Come on with me. Flesh. So he got to a point where he says, shut up flesh. Not my will. Let thy will be done. So what was Jesus doing? Making a decision. Making a decision. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 4 with me. In Matthew chapter 4, And verse 17. Wow. I want you to see this verse like you never saw it before. Jesus now has been baptized, right? He, he then went through the wilderness temptation. Right. You did you? Now watch this. Everyone look up at the screen or look at your Bible. Watch this. Say that with me. This is Jesus' first sermon. This is Jesus what? Come on, say it. First sermon, first message. Well, how do you know this is first message? Watch this. Uh, it said, from that time after he came forth, Jesus began, he began to preach. To preach. So this is first sermon, right? He began from, he, what, he went through the wilderness uh, and all the things, John the baptizing and all that. And now Jesus began Everyone say the word began. Yeah. To preach. And this is what he says. Watch what Jesus said. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want you to see how profound this is. It is mind-boggling. The wisdom and knowledge of the first message. And it's only, look, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, eight, eight words, right? Repent for the kingdom of God is at what? You know what Jesus just said? He went back to the Garden of Eden where man made a decision to take from the tree. And he's dying. Man is dying. Jesus come along and says, Repent. You know what repent means? You made a bad decision in the garden. Now make a good one. And what repent? Repent is, a, is time to make a life change. It's time to make a decision. The first message, the first word came out, Jesus said, my was decision making time. I said in the last Bible study today that 
if Jesus had came to earth and preached John, Matthew, Matthew 4, chapter 4 and 17, he could have went back to heaven off that one verse. He ain't had to preach nothing else. That is the whole gospel. Repent, for the kingdom of God is available now. But you got to make a choice and repent if you want the kingdom. He could have went to the cross and died and said, I preached a perfect message. I told them repent, they can come to the kingdom. But they got to confess, they got to make a decision, they got, it, it's a time to choose. And then they can come and be a part of the kingdom of God. Y'all got it? Somebody say that's a perfect message. That's a salvation message. That's a message that tells us you got a choice. Do you want to go to heaven? Or do you not? Do you want to go there? Do you want to repent from your sin or not? It's amazing that Jesus' the first message was a salvation message, a message to choose. Why? He could have came and said, well, let me heal the lame man first. Let me do, turn the water into wine. Let me take the two fish and five loaves of bread and feed the multitude. But he didn't. He says, you mess up in the garden because you made a, cho a decision. Now I'm coming along and I'm going to tell you, make another decision. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. If you read the Bible from this day on, like what I'm about to tell you, your eyes are going to be open like never before. If you read the Bible this way, look at what Jesus taught, how he taught it, or go all the way through the scripture. Every time God told someone to do something, Jesus told someone to do something, it had, they had to make a decision. <laughs> it's amazing. Every time Jesus would do something, it was a decision that a person had to make to get what, they, what God was offering. You remember the man, the man, uh, uh, the man that was blind, he put the clay, spit, and put the clay on his hand. He said to the man, now you need to go to the pool of Salon and wash. The man could say, no, no, I'm not doing nothing. He said, but you got to be a part of this. Amen? Uh, uh, the two blind men said, Lord, have mercy on us. And then Jesus finally said, what do you want? Then they say, open our eyes that we might see. Then Jesus said, do you believe? You, every time you want something from God and I want something from God, it comes with decision making. You got to make a decision. And most of us don't want to make decision, and yet we want God to bypass our false, our lack of making a decision and do something for us. And that's not how God operates. Y'all with me? All right, let me go and say something um, about decision making. Uh, I brought up in the last study. Okay, y'all remember when crack cocaine came out? Okay, don't get quiet now. Let's, let's, get, let's make the devil mad. How many of y'all remember when crack cocaine came out? It was devastating. It destroyed generations. It turned sane people insane. It took, it, took, it, it took working people that would go to work and they were homeless because they was addicted to the rock cocaine and they could not even go to work, could not even take care of their children. All they wanted to do was lay around and hit that rock. That, I say rock, crack. Hit the pipe. Right? I mean, it was everywhere. Watch this. Why did I bring that up? For well, a couple of reasons. Someone had to actually go into some laboratory or come up with something. It didn't just grow on a tree. Most people that got on alcohol, you can function a little bit, or you did a little, um, well, I said the marijuana, you function a little. I'm not recommending none of, all, none of that. But this thing came out to make you an addict. It came out to literally kill you and destroy you. It, it, came, it came to turn anybody, and I don't care who you were, if you got on it, you, you were messed up. Ain't nothing matter. Your family didn't matter. Your children didn't matter. All that matter that you can get your nace hit. Somebody was so evil, it was, behind it was the devil. 
because he came to kill, steal, and destroy. But some, you, some human being that were willing to go in there and put some little stuff together, and then, they, and then they got out there. Now, why did I say this? The only power against that and the only power to get off of it was to take your free will to God and say, Lord, I can't do it. I, I need you, Jesus. You had to choose to run to Jesus. Come on now, somebody. This thing was so bad, you, if the only, look, somebody say, yeah, this and that. No, there had to be a power above that power that you had to be willing to say, Lord, I surrender all. I'm running to you, God. And I need you, God. But you know, you had to come, watch this, you had to come under the influence and the power of the devil, and yet God didn't care nothing about it. He, if a person was willing, I don't care what the devil has going on, if you are willing and God see brokenness, the devil can't hold you no longer. Come on now. When God see what, come on say it church, when God see brokenness, the devil can't hold you no longer. And, 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 that's, and that's what was going on. Amen. The devil couldn't, um, some people got free from it. But now, let me go to another thing. Let's go to the free will. And I went back to him. I made a decision when I was a teenager not to get into something. Still at the end of the day, I'm going too forward with this. Till, still at the end of the day, nobody forced that on people. Secondly, the Bible said, Solomon says, be wise, choose wisdom, get understanding. You know one of the best ways that your will can be helped, that you're not trapped, is by, about really stop and observe. Observing others. It's two things I'm going to say here. All right, because I know, I know the power of the devil. But first of all, you can observe other people and say, you know what? If that's doing that to them, I am just going to learn from their mistake. That's number one. And that could have worked in a certain sense, and it does work today where people are strong in the Lord and they look for wisdom, they look for understanding, they watch people make a mistake and they learn even from other people's mistake. But I want to show you something that even when we try to use our, well, watch this, you have a will, oh, y'all got it? We have a free will, but you can't use willpower. I want y'all to hear this now. Just because God gave us a will don't mean our will is enough on its own. You know, somebody say, uh, you know, just if you're willing, depending on what the will is, is the willing being surrendered to the will or are you just willing in your own might? That's when people fail, when they decide, I'm going to stop this today. No, 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 no. You, you are trying to be determined. You need more than determination. You need the power of the Holy Ghost by surrendering your will to his, his will. That's why a lot of us get frustrated. Anybody ever make their mind up? I'm going to do this this week. And next week you ain't doing it no more. Why? Because we are trying to use, say it with me, willpower. God gave us a will, but the willpower is not enough to beat the devil. That's what we mess up. We talking about, well, well I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to will myself. The devil say, I, I love to see you will yourself. You can't, will. God, the devil said, I'm not afraid of your will. I'm afraid of your will being surrendered to God's will. That's why Jesus said, not my will. I'm surrendering my will for who? God's will. And the devil said, oh. If you just try to have real power in the garden, I would have got you. But you said, I'm surrendering my will to God's will. A lot of us willing. Our will is just as long as, lasts just as long as our mental and physical state can put, or, you know, handle it. If you're willing, 
the minute you don't feel like it no more, God will supersede our will. So it's not about willingness. You got to be willing to trade in your will for God's will. So, so what God wants us to do is, is, let me show this verse and show you how the devil works on our will. Go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis chapter uh, 2 again. Chapter 3. Put up Genesis 3 again in verse 7. Okay. This is what he do with our will. In verse 7. Uh, no, no, verse uh, 6. Put up verse 6. This is what our will have to face. And when the woman, woman saw that the tree was what? Good for food. That's one good thing. He used the word good. And that it was pleasant. That's good and pleasant. And, uh, and, and uh, uh, to the eyes. And a tree to be what? Desired. So you got to know it looked good. See, it's pleasant and desirable, right? That's what, your will, that's what our will is up against. That's what your will up against. All our will. Okay, watch this. Let someone say, and, and, I, and, and, and I'm trying to get better and better. Let someone say, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to eat a certain ice cream, cake, or whatever. Okay. What you're going to have to face is your eyes seeing a your favorite ice cream, <laughs> desiring it, look good. What is that purpose? That the will would be persuaded. So the devil going to always show you when you get ready to go in our own personal will, he's going to always show you those three things. Desirable, good, pleasant. And we're going to say, Lord, I don't... I really don't want it, but it sure look good. I desire it. It's going to bring me so much pleasure. That's what your will up against. That's what our will up against. But when we trade our will up to God's will, he show you, watch it, God will show you, you still see something desirable, but then you'll see the cost of the desirable. Do that make any sense to anybody? See, 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 what God does, he takes us in the spirit dimension and he shows other things in the realm of the spirit, amen, that we can't see with our natural eyes. That's why we have to say, Lord, I trade in my will. I don't, and that's, that's, that's hard to do. But it's not hard either because when we fall in love with God, you just want to chase after him. Jesus said, okay, watch what Jesus says. He said, you can, watch what Jesus said to us. You can never be a successful follower of mine until you pick up your cross and... No, it's something he said before that. He said, pick up your cross and... Die. Deny Deny oh, there you go. Jesus said, you will never be... What he said, you want to follow me? He said, this, how, this is the price they can call. You pick up your cross. What are they picking up your cross? Whatever burden you have to bear and you deny yourself, then you, you can follow me. So Jesus said, there will always be a time in, in our lives where we have to say, here's my will, here's God's will, but to truly follow God, again, how do we even get there? I mean, how do we even get to the point, watch this, how do we ever get to the point, and I, I, it's almost like, are we trapped in these fleshly bodies? Because they do desire they do have the natural uh, 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 tendencies and we're in it, right? It's not like we can take our flesh off and say, hey, I'm good now, I'm all spirit. There's a wrestling going on between the flesh and the spirit. It'd be good if we could just do this thing in the closet, lock the closet and live spiritually. But this flesh, it is made up of desiring and wanting and, and looking and good. And we go through all kind of stuff because the flesh said, I want, I want, I desire, I desire, and it look good, feel good, all that. And so are we trapped? 
We're trapped, but we're not trapped. Because great is he that's in us than he's in the world. What can get us out of the trap? More of Jesus, less me. Deny yourself. Jesus said, you can't follow me, feed yourself. Give yourself everything you want. It got to be denying. What is denying? I won't, but I can't have. Denying, that's what denying is. I want, my will won't, but I can't have. That's denying. Oh, some of y'all like, la, la, la. Listen, that's what it's all about. All right, let's close with this. Go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 3, we're close. And verse 5, put that on the screen for me. Proverbs 3 and 5. Y'all doing so good back there tonight. Amen. Now watch what he says. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not what? All right, verse 6. In all thy way. Okay, okay, watch this, what he just said. Are we trapped? Yes, we are trapped if we don't acknowledge him. Let's, come on, listen. We are trapped if we don't. What is acknowledging him? Like, Lord, I need you right now. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Help me, Lord. I need your power. I need your direct. See, acknowledging God, meaning, it, wow. Watch this. Watch this. I'm, I'm trying to close. Watch this. If, the, if your house is on fire tonight, who do you call? 911, and you call who? Fire department. Why? You're acknowledging you need help. And, they, and, they, and, and the minute you tell them your address and what, what's going on, they come to you. You can sit in the house and say, I'm going to handle it. We sit in our flesh and we say, I'm going to handle it. And we don't call on the power. To, to put out the fire. Anybody getting this? If, a, if somebody breaking your house tonight, I know you know you can try to do your little thing, whatever, but if you're going to call what? The, now what? the police department, you're saying, hurry here, because what? I'm acknowledging I need help. Isn't it amazing we try to handle everything in our flesh? I wish I had a church with me. Without God, we want to handle it. That's right. That's right. I'm strong enough. I can handle it. I'm a man. I'm a real woman. Hallelujah. And the devil said, I'm glad you think you can handle it. I'm glad you're not calling on the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad you think you all of that. Because by yourself, without your helper, I got you. In all thy ways, anybody need him tonight? See, why the devil try to get us? You will call for the police department, we'll call for the fire department, we'll call for every assistant available, but when it comes to calling for help from God, oh, we can handle that. And God says so, just because you have a will, your will, you can't, you can't will your way through stuff, stuff, things. You can't, it's willpower. Willpower is the devil, oh, I just heard God. Willpower, man, willpower is the devil playing playground. Man, willpower, that's the devil playground. You, our willpower. Okay. Jesus come along. Let me close. Jesus come along. And he see a man possessed with demons. And the man has so many demons in it. The man can't even talk. Jesus come up to him and he said, what are, what's your name? He said, we're a legion. We're many. He, see, the man, <laughs> the demon just done took over. Watch this. Jesus come along. He says, okay, since y'all want to do all the talking, I command you basically to part. 
See, watch this. He, the demon departed. See, when it comes to, when it comes to the power of God, he used power. When we get to God, he start commanding what we are trying to do with willpower. See, I ain't got time to try to will the devil out. I want power to tell him. Jesus give us power. The Holy Ghost give us power beyond our will. And then we start, and I hope you're getting it tonight. Listen, how do you do this? You acknowledge him. Okay, if you're weak in anything tonight, acknowledge God. Say, Lord, I'm weak in this area. <laughs> and, and I keep trying to will myself through it. And I keep failing. And I get up and I try to will again. So God, I, I come tonight and I acknowledge. I keep will, trying to use willpower to do something that they're going to take due to us power, the dynamite power, the power of the Holy Ghost. I keep trying to do it in my will. And sometimes we do it self-consciously. We don't even know we're trying to do it without God. Amen. Amen. It's easy to acknowledge God. I'm weak, God. Uh, and when I'm weak, then I am strong. Paul said, I glory in my weakness because in my weakness, God is strong. So, whatever problem you have, if you have a problem with your temper, some people are going to live their whole life and never be nice to nobody. They ain't willing to be nice and they don't know how to be nice. And they need to go to God and say, Lord, I'm just not nice. And I need to, I'm weak. I can't never say nothing nice. I, a lot of times people don't even know they that way either. So I don't know how they go and pray about something they don't know. I'll pray for you. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Have y'all followed this tonight? And if you ever need wisdom and knowledge on this lesson, Go back to what Jesus said in the garden. He's showing us, not my will. What will he talking about? Okay, what was Jesus praying? He said, Father, let this... Jesus never was praying not to die for us. Now, he wasn't praying not to die for us. He was saying, can I do it another way? See, that's what Jesus was praying. That's right. Can this cup, that's right. do I have to drink this cup, this crucifixion cup, this suffering on the cross and being nailed my hand to, nailing my hand to a post and nailing my feet to uh, the post uh, and suffering? I don't mind dying, but can we drink another cup? And God says, watch this. Now, God says, I want y'all to get this. I'm wrapping it up. God says, no. Watch this. And then Jesus says, we're in this. Okay. If I have to drink this cup, I'm going to drink it. It won't be my will. Let your will be done. See, he, he, he had to wear flesh to deny himself. If, amen. 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 Okay, let me tell you why he had to drink that cup and then we'll go home, go home tonight. Why did Jesus have to die on the cross? Yes, it was predetermined before the foundation of the world. Blood had to be shed. But even greater than that, let me show, yeah. Y'all shooting at it, but let me give you the answer. All right, here it is. You remember when Jesus said, as Moses was lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What did Moses lift that serpent up on? A pole, a, rock, a pole, a, like a wood. Okay, watch what happened. In the garden... When Adam sinned, 
God put swimming, a swimming of swords of fire turning every way over the tree of what? Life. So Adam, and then chase him from the tree of life and chase him out of the garden. Look, in the garden, there was a tree called life. life. Why did Jesus have to die that way? Because God took that tree from the garden and set it on Calvary. He had to die by that cup. On the tree, on Calvary, life was hanging. Glory. He had to put life back on the tree. The tree of life. Hallelujah. The same tree he chased him away from, he said, now you can come. But you got to repent. Same tree. Christ was the tree of life in the garden. Christ was the tree of life on Calvary. You can't go any other way. You got to get back on the tree. Come on, somebody. And watch this. When they got ready to crucify Jesus, they didn't have a cross prepared. You know, they didn't have a cross prepared. So they, they used to would take all the bark off, smooth the cross down a little bit, get it ready to go. They didn't have one prepared for Jesus because there was a kangaroo trial. They rushed him in, rushed him out and said, we're going to crucify him. They didn't have a tree ready. So they just looked over there and said, it ain't ready. They said, don't matter, grab it. You heard, that's why they sang the song, the old rugged cross. It, it wasn't prepared, but yet it was prepared. Tree. And on the, on the cross, on Calvary, in the middle of death, on the right-hand side, and, the, and death on the left-hand side, there were two male factors that was death. They were representing what? Death. Now, one of them turned and got saved, but they represented what? Death. In the middle of death, there was a tree of life. Y'all, I hope y'all getting this night. God put life in the midst of death. He just couldn't die by itself. He had to die around death. And somebody saw life while he was dying and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you shall be with me in paradise. He put life among death. Go out in the world today. today there's life out there. Jesus is still life among death. That's why we are here tonight. He came in our dead's place and gave us life. Come on, give him a praise tonight. So God says, no, this cup will not pass. I need life on a tree called, on a hill called Calvary. And he went and put him up there. And as Moses looked at the serpent, everybody looked up that day and saw life on the tree. Hallelujah. I love when Jesus died. The Bible says that the minute he dropped his head and locked over his shoulder, the earth lost its, um, uh, as far as its control. And the earth went to shaking. And, and darkness covered the earth. And the ground is split and buildings are falling apart. All because Jesus died? Yeah, because I look at it this way. Jesus is the foundation that holds everything together. And, and, and when the foundation did this, <laughs> this even an S-U-N say, look, I can't shine. The S-O-N just dropped his head. You know I got to drop mine. So the sun went down and dropped his head. That's right. That's right. He said, if the S-O-N dropped his head, I can't shine for y'all. Hallelujah. Glory be the God. You are the sum of your choices. Grow up, quit blaming people for the decision you make. Amen. Amen. If you done made some bad ones, time to make some good ones. Amen. Acknowledge him 
Lord, I need your help. He'll be there. Let's all stand. All right, y'all do know to uh, Wednesday night, they doing, uh, we're really getting things together for a beautiful fellowship Wednesday night. Amen? Amen. And uh, we know Wednesday night, Valentine and all that stuff. We're not worried about Valentine. We're going to have a good night of just fellowshipping at the former sanctuary. The table's being set up. We're going to have, um, um, help me with that. What we have in there? We're going <laughs> to, um, I can't call, I can't, the, we just, just come, put it that way. Just come. Come. It's going to be a great night for about two hours of fellowshipping. We will have refreshment and all there. Every, we're just going to have a great time. So if you're able to come out, uh, come dress like you want them. Now, don't dress too far down, <laughs> but we can be somewhere semi, semi-formal, formal. formal. Business formal. Yeah, so, 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 so. We ain't got to dress real up, but just don't. Uh, y'all got me. And what's We're going to start at 6.30 to 8.30. That gives some people who may be working on time to come. Even if they come at 7.30, they can be a part of it for an hour. We're going to have a great time. Don't miss it. Uh, I want you there. I want us to fellowship like never before. Amen? Amen. All right. The word has been spoken. The word has been received. Amen. Amen. Walk in your blessing.